next topic is solvation energy and the solubility let's see a few terms before the study of the solvation energy and the solubility first one is the lattice energy as we know that the ionic compounds or ionic solids exist in cluster exist in cluster it means a cation is surrounded by many anions and similarly an anion is surrounded by many cations single cation and single anion do not exist in the ionic compound so i can say the ionic compound exists as a cluster in the previous lecture we have studied that the unit cell in the unit cell of the ionic solids the anions are present at the different position as well as the cations are also present at the different position of the unit cell so these anions supposed to be this is our anion and supposed to be this is our cation these anion and cations are bound together with a strong bonding that is called as ionic bond ionic bond or i can say ionic bonding if we provide some energy to this unit cell or the crystal lattice of the ionic compound this crystal lattice will break and these ions cation and anions become free to move the amount of energy required to break the one mole of this lattice is called as lattice energy or i can say the lattice enthalpy we have studied this term in the previous lectures second one is the solvation energy supposed to be we are having a solvent any particular solvent if we are going to add this ionic compound this ionic solid in this particular solvent then solvent molecule will surround the lattice of this ionic solid and when the solvent molecule surrounds the lattice of the ionic solid certain amount of energy is being released this amount of energy is called as solvation energy this amount of energy is called as solvation energy if the solvation energy is greater than this lattice energy if the solvation energy greater than this lattice energy supposed to be we uh, required 100 kJ per mole energy to bre break the lat lattice of this ionic solid or to separate the ions of this ionic solids and when we add this ionic solid in water solvation energy released supposed to be 120 kJ per mole so in this case the amount of energy that is solvation energy is more as compared to lattice energy so in this case when we add this so, uh, ionic solid in into this solvent the lattice of this ionic solid will break and this ionic ions of this ionic solid will become separate positive and negative ion will become separate when we add them in this particular solvent so in this case in this case our ionic compound will be soluble in it will be soluble in solvent i am repeating if the solvation energy is more than the lattice energy in that case the ionic solids or a compound will be soluble in particular solvent second case if this solvation energy is not good enough to break the lattice of this ionic solid or i can say that if the solvation energy is less as compared to the lattice energy in that case the ionic compound will be insoluble in particular solvent what is the what do you mean by lattice enthalpy or i can say lattice energy and the solvation energy and how does they affect the solubility of an ionic solid so first of all we have to write the definition of lattice enthalpy or i can say the lattice energy as we know that the amount of energy required to dissociates one mole of a solid into its ions second one is the that is solvation enthalpy solvation enthalpy or solvation energy the amount of energy released when one mole of a solid when one mole of a solid is dissolved in a liquid or one mole of an ionic solid dissolved in a liquid 
first one how does they affect the solubility if the uh, lattice enthalpy if the lattice and energy or lattice enthalpy less than the solvation enthalpy or solvation energy the compound is ionic compound is soluble in solvent and vice versa if lattice enthalpy is more than the solvation energy in this, that case the ionic solid will be insoluble in particular solvent next term is the hydration if our solvent is water if the solvent is water and when we add a particular solid ionic solid in water the amount of energy released during this is called as hydration enthalpy so hydration enthalpy or i can say the enthalpy uh, solvation energy is same if the solvent is water it is called as hydration enthalpy next is the ionic and the covalent compounds there are some difference between ionic and covalent compounds which are important for the reasoning questions first thing is that the ionic compounds all those compounds which are having ionic bond are called as ionic compound and second one those compounds which are having covalent bond are called as covalent compound next one is the important the ionic compound are having very high melting and boiling point and similarly the uh, covalent compounds are having low low melting and boiling point the ionic compounds are comparatively harder and the covalent compound are comparatively softer they exist in solid state only and they exist in all that is solid liquid and in gas state the ionic compound are highly soluble this property is also important the ionic compound are highly soluble in water or i can say more soluble in water soluble in water while the covalent compound are less soluble or i can say insoluble in water so there are three property that is high melting melting boiling point hard and soft and solubility in water these three property uh, are essential or required for the reasoning questions the next is that there is no compound which is 100% ionic in nature and similarly there is no compound there is no compound which is which is 100% covalent in nature covalent in nature all the ionic compound must have some covalent character similarly all the covalent compounds all the covalent compounds also have some ionic characters so how much covalent character an ionic compound how much covalent character an ionic compound have can be explained by the fazan rule can be explained by the fazan rule